Hey there, we are broadcasting live. Welcome to Phil's First Party Parlay, where we talk all things timely and topical in the insurance restoration industry. I'm Phil Sanoff, trial lawyer with Morgan & Morgan Insurance Recovery Group. With Morgan & Morgan's Insurance Recovery Group, I have 55 of the most awesome attorney colleagues you would ever want to know. We are in 25 offices all across the country. If you have any problem with any insurance claim, you need to come see us. We can help you wherever you are. You can reach us through our website, forthepeople.com, hit pound L-A-W from any cell phone, anywhere, or just get me on my personal cell, 713-825-3444. Morgan & Morgan Insurance Recovery Group, come see us. Well, joining us tonight on this edition of The Parlay is one of those great friends and colleagues, Morgan Basai. Morgan, please hit that magic button, come back to see us. Hey, Phil, how are you doing? Hey, Morgan, there she is. I'm great, how are you, ma'am? I'm not too bad, it's good to see you. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you. I, it always feels like it's so long, but this time it really has been. We've both been off doing our different directions and haven't been together for a while. It has been. All right. Well, I am so grateful. I need to introduce you a little bit, Morgan. Uh, for our viewers, the reason that Morgan is one of my favorite, favorite colleagues, and I hope nobody else hears that. Let's keep that our secret, Morgan. Don't tell anyone I said that is Morgan is so wonderful to work with, one of the hardest worth workers, one of the most diligent and ethical attorneys. I've been doing this for over 30 years, and she's truly one of the most diligent and ethical attorneys I've ever worked with. So I'm gonna, I've never told that to you, Morgan, but I'm grateful for you having those traits. Thank you. Another thing that really makes me grateful to work with Morgan She's been practicing for over six years, like a lot of us. When she started her practice, she worked for an insurance defense firm. That gives us the experience and understanding of how do insurance companies evaluate claims? How do they look at the different evidence? What type of value? What puts them at risk to be able to want to resolve cases before it comes to someone like me to go get that jury verdict? Much as I love those, it's better for our clients if we can get that settlement beforehand. And Morgan is so good at putting those together. Morgan's gonna talk with us tonight about all things cast iron pipe cases. Morgan's in our Tampa, Florida office and handles, I believe exclusively, help me with that Morgan, I believe it's exclusively cast iron pipes at this point. Correct, 100% cast iron pipes cases. Morgan has been with us for almost two years now, representing policyholders exclusively on cast iron pipe cases. Morgan knows that I'm a trial lawyer. I believe in the power of three, the magic of three. So Morgan's gonna give us the three points we're going to address tonight. And just like we always do, she's gonna lay them out as a forecast. So folks that see this video later repurposed on the various social media channels will know what's coming then we'll come back and fill in the substance, the details, after we get it all laid out there. So Morgan, please tell us what you're gonna hit for people this evening. All right, Phil. The first thing we're gonna talk about um, are house rules indicating that your plumbing has failed. I He's love back. that, I love that. The second thing we're gonna talk about today uh, is no damage denials. Got it, wonderful. What's our third point? Third is how insurance companies trick you into thinking that your pipes are working just fine. Got it. Got it. Thanks very much. One of the, I love your creativity, the way that you put these together, uh, the idea about house rules and to have that as a topic. Uh, we've all, you and I have worked with clients that everybody has their rules <laughs> and I'm, I don't want to go into the substance too much. I just really, that, termed that way, uh, I really love the creativity and the power behind that. So tell us what you mean when we talk about house rules applying to cast iron pipe plumbing. House rules are, um, as the name sounds, house rules, special rules that homeowners have 
um, that are unique to their house, such as you better take a quick shower. You got five minutes or less. You um, cannot shower while running the dishwasher, things like that. And there's, there's a, uh, a long list that I can tell you about, but I'll, we'll start with those two for now. And so places like some of the clients that you and I have worked together on their cases, they couldn't run the dishwasher and the washing machine at the, some at the same time. Those are the types of rules. They've got to just baby the system to be able to make it work the best they can when the cast iron pipes are failing. Exactly. And, and some other house rules um, are don't use that toilet. I have clients that can only use one bathroom, um, even though there's a family of four living in the house. Right, right, right. And so if some, if folks have had to have that understanding in their house that may not even realize that it's because of what's going on with cast iron pipe, what are the types of things that you need folks to know? Well, if they're not able to use certain parts of their house or they have these special rules, they should call us. Um, these are uh, indications that their drain plumbing system has failed. Um, and is not functioning as it should and must be replaced. Right, right, right. Anything else that we need to let folks know about house rules as it applies to their potential claim and case on cast iron pipe plumbing system? Some other house rules might be um, that you can't go number two uh, in the bathroom. Um, it, it sounds like, well, obviously you must have a problem, but this happens slowly over time and people don't realize that, um, that it's a problem because it, like I said, it happens slowly over time and they just get used to it. But again, that's an indication that there's something going on with your drain pipes. It's under your floor, um, under your house, and um, you probably have failed cast iron pipes. That one backs up. You can't use the bathroom like that in this one. You have to use the other one. It comes back up into the tub. We can't shower for a while. Those types of things, God awful stuff, but that's when they really need to understand it's something that we need to look at their pipes and see about getting them replaced for the insurance that they've been paying for all these years. Exactly. Got it, got it, got it, great. What are we moving on to next, Miss Morgan? We are moving on to talk about no damage denials. Got it, let's hear it. All right. Insurance companies love to deny claims uh, and, and find that there's no damage. So what that means is the insurance company will go out, inspect your property, and uh, conclude that you have no damage. And so I'm a policyholder. My drains aren't working right. I've got some backups. I file a claim, and I get a letter from them that says, we don't find damage in your house. What? to your plumbing system, what are some things that we know that we need to come then investigate to show that there really are those damages? Well, what we do is we send experts out, um, someone to video scope the drain line, someone to inspect the property. We have experts that go out and do testing to see if your drain lines have holes, breaks in them. Um, the insurance company, they don't, they don't do that. You're lucky if they send a plumber. Um, their goal is to not find damage because that means they don't have to pay your claim. And you and I have talked about this. It's an unfortunate visual, but most of the time when there are no damage denials, that means the pipes are leaking under the house, into the foundation and under the foundation, which is the reason that there's no visible damage for the insurance company to easily see. And they're only going to see it if it's easy to see. Exactly. And also, I'm, I find that these insurance companies, they send out an adjuster. The adjuster is in and out. I mean, he might spend or she might spend 10 or 15 minutes. They look in the bathroom, they look in the kitchen, they snap some photos, and they're out. And they, there's no way for you to be able to find any damage in a house when you're in and out and not spending a sufficient amount of time there that they should. And truth is, this is as unfortunate as it is to talk about, as unfortunate as it is to think about, I think you know where I'm going. These houses, when there's channeling in the pipes, when there's holes in the pipe, you can't see the damage because it's leaking out 
into the foundation, into the structural backfill. And so essentially, these folks are living in a house that is built upon a pool of raw sewage. And you can't see it. <laughs> you can't see it. And it's God awful. And I've, I've, I had a, a client recently who um, opened up, she had a plumber open up a section um, of her slab near her toilet and you could see all the sewage under there. She, uh, you couldn't see it before, it's, it's under the slab. But there's no damage and so many policyholders that, that ultimately do finally come to us have had their no damage denial letter for months, some up to perhaps a year I've seen and all this time, they've been living in a house built on a pool of raw sewage. Exactly. Unreal. One, one uh, final point that the insurance companies ignore. Um, homeowners might have a overflow from a toilet, for instance, and the insurance company knows that there was an overflow. However, they ignore um, certain standards that they should not ignore that require proper cleanup and sanitation after you have a sewage overflow. So they don't see damage. The tile floor still looks fine once it's cleaned a little bit. The baseboards, those sorts of things still look fine after they're cleaned a little bit. But the standards for properly sanitizing and cleaning are just simply not followed. They are ignored. Got it. Definitely. Insurance companies will also um, rely on a homeowner without any training or background in identifying damage. And if the homeowner says there's no damage, the insurance company, they're, you know, jumping up and down in the background and they'll put it in their denial letter. Homeowner found no damage and they rely on the homeowner when they should be relying on their investigators, their adjuster their duty to find the damage. They're being paid a bunch of money. They have that duty. They just come ask the homeowner and they quit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else on the no damage denial letter that we need to make sure folks know? I think we covered it all. Okay, all right. Take us into point three, Miss Morgan. Point three is how the insurance companies trick you that your pipes are working fine. I really want to hear this. This is one that I haven't heard you speak on before. So please lay it on us. So the insurance company will um, sometimes hire a professional such as a plumber or um, a leak detection company or an engineer who goes out and inspects your property. And this professional will write a long report and sometimes even a short report. And it looks persuasive. You think, well, this professional says that I don't have a problem. But the insurance company's professionals are not doing the right test. They're, they're not doing what they should in order to, for instance, find out whether or not your drain pipes are leaking under, under the slab, under your house where you can't see. So I'm a homeowner, I report uh, my problem with my cast iron pipe. I get a report, I don't know any different, it's my insurance company, I've paid them a bunch of money over the years. Of course I can trust my insurance company. Ha, they send a plumber out that only works for insurance companies. Virtually all of their revenue comes from payment from insurance companies. And they write a report that they don't have any damage. And unfortunately, policyholders are going to think it's a professional. How do I know? Why would this person lie to me? It's a, it's a third party company, but it's not really a third party company. Like you said, they're, um, most of their work, if not all, comes from the insurance company. Got it. Got it. What other ways do the insurance companies trick us into thinking our pipes are okay? Um, well, in, uh, in addition to the, um, the reports, they'll also tell you that it's a maintenance issue. Um, ah. That basically it's your fault. You didn't do something that you should do. Um, and sometimes they will have a report from the professionals we just spoke about. Um, and, and the report from the professionals might say, well, you can just um, jet your lines. Right. Which means it's kind of like a pressure wash for your drain pipes. That does not fix the problem. 
Insurance companies will like you, will try to convince you that that'll fix the problem. Jetting your lines will not fix the problem. Blowing stuff out around in there and then just put off the inevitable. It's going to start backing up again. It's going to overflow sooner than later. The jet's got to be done over or completely replace the pipe. Right, and I've had clients that um, after the insurance company says jet your lines, they, jet, they get their lines jetted, and guess what? Not too long thereafter, additional backups, additional overflows, and it's mainly because, first of all, the jetting does not work, but it does not fix um, certain problems with the pipe, such as um, back pitch, which means the pipes are angled the wrong way. Um, it, it doesn't... If there's holes in the drain pipes, the jetting is not going to fix the holes. In fact, it can make the holes worse. It can make the holes bigger. Now you have more sewage um, under your house. Well, and that's what I remember from the case that one of the cases we worked on together, they jetted them and all that does is blow all that stuff out. It doesn't fix the holes. And before you know it, here comes more backing up. Right. They, insurance companies might also say snake the drains, which means they, they put a, a little cable into your drain pipes and, um, and, and they kind of they they kind of clean them out. Um, that also does not fix the problem. That does not fix holes. That does not fix channeling, bellies, back pitch. Snaking is, a, is not a, a, a fix. It's a temporary gig, but it's not, it can't even be called a fix. It's a temporary something, but it doesn't fix the line. It's temporary help. <laughs> I knew you'd come up with it. <laughs> but within, you know, days to weeks, um, it's time to snake them again. And that's right. one of the reasons why snaking and, um, for instance, jetting does not fix the problem. The way to fix the problem, the backups, the overflows, the slow drains is to tear out your drain pipes and have them replaced. Perfect, perfect. And nobody gets that done for policyholders like Morgan and Morgan Insurance Recovery Group. Exactly. Got Pound it. law. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Pound L A W from any cell phone anywhere. Well, Morgan, if folks are seeing this, we're going to put this on all the social channels and platforms. How do we need folks if they say, I want Morgan to help me with my cast iron pipe plumbing problems? How do we need those folks to get in touch with you? You can call me at 813-223-0961. And I would love to hear from you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, this has been one of my favorite episodes of Phil's First Party Parlay, brought to you by Morgan & Morgan Insurance Recovery Group. I'm getting ready to take us home, Morgan. What else do you have, if anything, that we need folks to know from us this evening? Um, I think we've covered everything. Um, if your house is built before 1975, you have house rules, you have slow drains, you have backups, foul smells, call pound or dial pound law, call me, call Phil. Um, we'll, we would love to talk to you. We love talking uh, about drain pipes. Morgan and Morgan and Church Recovery Group. We can help you wherever you are. Thank you, Morgan. I'm grateful for you to come help us this evening and we'll see everybody soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Morgan.